Hey everyone, I've got here my Christmas present that my star of a husband got me. It's the new 61 millimeter space cat with the internal focuser design. I have the old helical focuser version of the 51 millimeter space cat. So this is a bit of an indulgent upgrade, but I've gotten along with it so well and it has a little kitty in a space helmet and it makes me happy. One thing I needed to do is to transfer the electronic focuser and the ASCII air from the 51 millimeter scope to this one, where previously it was all on a black cat ring. Uh, I found a diagram online on how it's done, and there's a great video of somebody doing it on a GT81, uh, which they say is pretty much the same principle, but I'm not really mechanically gifted, and I really struggle if the instructions don't perfectly match what I'm seeing. Um, so I've, I was really put off by the fact that it wasn't really 100% matching and I felt like some information was missing. So this video is for people who are like me and who need to actually see the steps being done. Um, sometimes it's really hard to record things really close up and my hands have been struggling with the wet and cold UK weather we've been having, the glamorous life of a musician. So, but hopefully this will be at least a little bit helpful. Anyway, my first issue was that I thought logically I would have to go through this knob here, the fine focus knob. But if you remove the fine focus knob, it doesn't reveal the shaft for the EAF. And if you remove the black knob, the coarse focus, it exposes the bearings, which you can't have. So if you want to keep it on and you want to place your EAF on this side, you have to use some spacers for the plate to reach. So if you don't want to use any sort of extra parts, you have to go in through this side, through the thermometer knob. Now that was my second moment of pause because it actually took me a bit to figure out how to remove the thermometer knob. Now looking back at the instructions, of course, remove the two inner screws but they're not visually exposed, you can't see them. And again, I'm not great at this, so it took me a second to figure it out. Here's a close-up that might possibly help you. After you remove the one visible screw underneath the knob, you have to rotate the focuser knob slightly, and in that same hole that you just removed the screw from, it will reveal two other grub screws that hold the thermometer in the shaft. So you place the Allen key into the hole, and turn the focuser knob slowly, you'll feel the Allen key sink into the hole a bit when it gets into it, and then unscrew that screw. Then lift the Allen key a bit, place it into the hole again, turn the focuser slowly, and look for the second screw to undo. This should now allow to remove the thermometer knob and reveal the shaft for the EAF. Now I've got the coupler for the focuser, and I'm attaching it to the focuser shaft. I'm using the same grub screw hole to tighten both grub screws on the coupler. The next thing is to attach the EAF plate to the focuser shaft. Now, this is a diagram of which screw holes you attach the EAF plate to. And see these ones that say, don't touch? Yeah, well, I touched. Um, it was a bit of a comedy of errors. I completely misunderstood something and attached my EAF plate to them. Thankfully, they are just there to add or remove um, twists to the focuser for smoother handling, so everything was fine. Anyway, once you've screwed the plate onto the focuser shaft, you can screw the EAF onto the plate itself, and then you have to tighten the screws on the coupler. There are two, and the easiest thing is to just turn the focuser knob on the other side to line them up and then tighten them. Just notice that once you've attached your EAF, the scope won't sit on the dovetail plate on a flat surface anymore because the EAF is lower, so you'll need to rest it on something. The other thing I did was to flip the rings so that the screw points were now on this side because that's where I wanted to attach my ASCII air so it balances better. Um, this is a bit of a temporary solution because I didn't have a mounting plate, but it's basically screwed into a three millimeter aluminum plate that's cut from a piece that I got at B&Q, which is basically a worse, sadder English version of Home Depot. But it's really nicely balanced now. And I find that if I go all the way to the EAF on the saddle, I'm actually nicely balanced in the declination axis. I hope this was a bit helpful. Um, 
uh, just one more thing I wanted to show you. So I got this directly from William Optics and I usually buy from retailers here in the UK, but William Optics had this New Year's deal that had the scope and the matching guide scope and the case and all the bits and pieces. And it all came to about 300 pounds cheaper than the scope itself would retail here in the UK. Um, they also held it for me to ship at a specific time and they threw in a New Year's discount. It was really great. But they sent me this plushie and here's what makes this entire purchase worth it. Okay, bye. <laughs> Clear skies.